Okay guys, so in this video I've added a few automated tests, so let's have a look at that. So for automated testing I decided to go with Cypress, and Cypress, if you may, you may not know what that tool is, but basically Cypress is just a, it's a way for you to write and maintain automated testing. But even then, you know, may not even know what that is. So let's actually show you what this is. So I have a few spec files here that I've created, which are going to test some of the flows. I haven't gone through the process of testing every aspect of my application. That's something we may want to do, but it depends on your testing strategy. But this is at least the bare bone minimum to verify that the basic functionality of the application is working. I should be able to log in, I should be able to create an account, and I should be able to actually create an email. So for demo purposes and for saving me a lot of time to just create a bunch of tests, this is going to be enough for now. So if I click run all specs, what's going to happen is that Cypress is going to open up a micro, uh, basically a browser. It's the Chrome browser. And it's going to start running predetermined tests that I have created against my application. As you can see here in the window, it's actually going through my application, inputting information, clicking on elements, and just walking through each step that I have created and verifying that, hey, my assertions are correct so that everything is working that I, as I expected. And this is, I can tell you this, for small scale development, like the size of application that we have, it may not be super vital, but it becomes extremely important when you get up to scale. And it's all but impossible to maintain a large system without having something like this. You're going to spend quite a lot of time regression testing if you don't have this sort of testing in place. You need a way to verify that you you know when you ship something new or create new code that you don't you do, don't break something that's already there and that is very 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 hard to do if you don't have this sort of thing so let's just walk through one of these tests so here i have a before each which is going to visit register and then it's going to grab the input with the name email and then i'm going to input this weird looking like as you can see here out in the outline you can actually see snapshots and I'm just going to input the random email and the reason why I have this randomness into it is because uh, I, if I create multiple emails or register several, several users with the exact same email I'm going to get an error right so I need to create a new email or a new account for every test run but I can also dump my database in between if I wanted to do that and then I grab the password, I input a password, grab the confirmation, input that. And as you can see here in the outline, I can just step through and actually really see exactly. That. I mean, I really like Cypress. It's a great tool. There are some bugs and there are issues that needs to be addressed. But overall, it's a very good tool, especially with all this, like, this ability to actually see what's happening. And then I check my location because I expect to be redirected to well, to the inbox, which is exactly what I'm going to be. I'm, as you can see now, when I'm, at, when I'm finally grabbing the cookie, I expect there to be a session cookie as well to make sure that, hey, I actually have this, you know, this session. And yeah, that's about it really. As you can see now, we've already caught one issue with our testing here. We see that this email is too long and it breaks our layout. And this is the reason, like, uh, some people, like, uh, I usually go between using Cypress or using Puppeteer, which is another tool where you could do this sort of automated testing, but this is why I like Cypress, because in Puppeteer you wouldn't actually, unless you took a screenshot or something like that, you wouldn't catch this as readily. You can use it as well, but yeah, it's a, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit on the, on the, on the fence on which one to use but in this video we're going to use Cypress. So we can already see that we need to address this. I created a bug as you may have seen earlier in my little board here that we need to address that later. And yeah and then we have the nest like the actual test here we can see that okay we are going to go to the comp click the compose button like that and then we going or we're going to grab 
this data dash test compose email. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment and then we basically just go through what you expect. You can see that I'm just filling out this information here and then I click the send button and when I do I see that hey this uh, this assertion here compose email should actually be closed like it should not be visible but the alert the title I should be able to get the title of that and that should be visible in the emails like and then I expect that there it should contain email sent and I expect the, the alert text element to be visible and emails was sent to successfully should be the, the containing text. I hope this makes sense to you. So this is how you can like automate most of the stuff that you work on and I highly recommend that you work this way on larger projects. So let's have a look at the diff here. Let's at least look at the meaningful diff. So first and foremost, I added a few new ignores because Cypress, which if you run it through the, without the actual visual UI, but rather as a part of your CI pipeline, which you can run for your command line, it generates screenshots and videos when there's an issue, for example, which is super great because once again, then you have something that you can go and look at and see, oh, okay, so my test broke, what was wrong? and then you just roll through that and you can actually see what went wrong in the test. And here's just the, some like default generated stuff. Apart from that, I added basically just a little bit of scoping to my Jest test because hey, Jest will look for something something dot spec dot js files by default and I don't want it to look in my Cypress directory, I just want it to look in the source. And then I have this little method here, or this new script called test Cypress that's just going to do Cypress run instead, which is going to run the CLI version of this. I actually had some issues with this and I need, I probably need to report a bug to some the Cypress team because there, I, I did find a bug, I think, in, in this, so this doesn't really work right now. But it doesn't have to, it's still valuable to me. So let's have a look at my Compose email spec. We can actually look at the file system here. So here we have our Cypress folder with, we don't need any fixtures because there's no reason for us to fake anything. Like ideally I want to avoid stopping off network requests. I just want to actually run it against the real application. And we have our tests. I don't have any plugins. And here are our screenshots from failed runs. And we have some support stuff that we're going to look at in just a moment. And here are some videos of previous runs. So if we have a look at Compose Email Spec, so what's happening here is that I'm requiring assert alert and create account, which are just two help alert helpers that I created in order to autumn like to simplify some like reoccurring testing because what before I start a test I want to basically create an email and a password like a random email and just a password and then I want to just go through the steps of creating an account so I create that account using Cypress as well so I'm not using like any fake accounts or anything like that I'm actually creating an account and then I'm going to start my test and then I can send an email I just grab this element here data dash test navigation bar compose and this um, this selector we can actually look at that because that's the thing that has changed in some of my components you see here that I've added data test data test and data test alert button these are the things that have changed and we can actually look at the others I give all of these components are just for testing purposes so I've just added this custom attribute and the reason why I have done that is because of some uh, something that I know from experience is a problem and that is when you may think that it's a good idea to like grab a class name or an I create an ID for example and that's not a good idea I even say like uh, I can open the selector play in playground here and I can just click this element here and it will generate a selector for me like this and I think this is a really bad idea I know for a fact I know that this is a bad idea because one of the biggest problems with these sorts of tests is the maintainability and you have this thing where you've now created a selector what's in effect a selector that needs to know what the current DOM structure is. If you change anything on this page, even if you just change a class name, 
if you change the class name of the like even if it has nothing to do with the functionality you can change anything and what's going to happen is that your test isn't going to find that selector anymore because you changed the DOM structure and that's super annoying because we want our tests like I don't care if somebody I don't know change changes one of these uh, selector names to something else I care that I can actually register my account and so in order to be able to select my input field in an effective manner I create this custom attribute that with a label and that way I can now know both from the code perspective and from the testing perspective that these components are linked if I see this component in my I see this ad attribute in my component I know that this component component has a test. There's a test associated with this register component just as I know that the logging component has a test associated with it and this button has a test associated with it. So there's this very nice connection between this component and the tests that are referencing this component. And by doing things with selectors you don't really have that and you also like have the downside of as I said you can't change the DOM structure or rather it's very likely that you will break a test just because you changed the class name or you sh moved one button outside of one element into another element even if it's just a minor t change the whole test breaks immediately. The downside of this is of course that all right now you have data attributes you have some uh, one more attribute that is going to go to your user i think that's a good trade-off it's a pragmatic trade-off in my world you don't have to do this you can go with as i said what cypress is uh, you, uh, providing you with but this is the way i like to do it anywho so we have a crate let's see if i was done walking through this yeah this is pretty much it should be fairly straightforward create account is this helper method that i made and all it does is that it's going to no sorry this is the test actually so we're just going to go through i can just scroll through the these things the, i hope this syntax is fairly feels fairly natural and intuitive to you because like uh, the idea here isn't really to show you exactly how Cypress works, but rather how we can make sure that this sort of testing is taking place and that we can actually make sure that our application is working. And the same thing goes for the logging spec. We declare an email and then we create an account with our password and stuff like that. And then we just click the logout button because after creating an account, we will land on the logging page or sorry, the inbox page. And then we click logout so that we go back to the logging page. And then we just try to log in basically. That's about it. We try to try a few things and then we have this should fail to log in if the password is incorrect. And well, we can actually look at that as well. I think here, no, this is the one. So if we just construct these through there and if the password is incorrect, we should see like this, um, let's see here. We should see, should fail login if password is incorrect. There we are. So let's not pin that anymore. We go through here and then we hit the inbox and we get the cookie which has a session and then we click the logout. And then our, we run our test here, and now we're just inputting like an incorrect, as you can see, we're just inputting fail as our input to the password, which is going to, of course, fail. And then we see error invalid username and or password. I mean, I, I really like this way of working. It's very, very easy and intuitive, in my opinion, to, to create these tests and then just go through and verify that everything is working the way you expect. And this is just a default file, which is what, uh, like, basically, it's just a, it's a few a default file that is generated together with together with this commands file or this index supports file, which is this file here, which is just something that uh, Cypress creates for you. And do, 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 what else is there? There is a cert alert, which is a helper function. All it does is that it takes in the Cypress object and the title and the text, and it's just going to make sure that the alert, because we check, you know, as you could see that we had several times we were checking the same alert. So 
yeah, I just extracted that out so that we make sure that the title is visible and that it contains the title we expect and that the text is visible and that it contains the text that we want. And then of course that our button, the alert button uh, can be visible and that it's clicked and when we click it the alert should no longer be visible. We could probably extend this and like add so you, if you click outside the modal and stuff like that so you can like check the different ways that a user could close this alert. But for now this is good enough. And then we have create account which is just going to go to the register page and it's going to type in the email, the password, the confirmation and then it's just going to click submit and then we're going to assert that we get redirected to the inbox and once that and we also make sure that there is a session because we want to make sure that there is a session cookie created with the registration and in the future we probably could create either not just use register we could just extract like logging flows and going to a specific page and stuff of that nature so uh, this is a pattern that's very useful where you just reuse certain steps in the helper function and just extract it out. So the, these are like the basics of how to do automated testing and uh, that's about it really. So let's have a look at moving this. We have some basic automated testing now and next up is going to have a bit of a look at how we can create a batch job to send our emails. So let's have a look at that.